Hey guys, welcome back to Hanging with the Kiddos Creative Creations. I'm LaToya, and in today's highly requested video, I'm going to be showing you how I create custom coloring books with Canva. So if you're interested in learning how to create a custom coloring and activity book, make sure you watch the entire video. Stay tuned. Alright guys, so the first thing we want to do to get started is head on over to canva.com and log into your account or create a free account if you don't already have one. You can select the shortcut option which is the photo book or we can go up to create a design, scroll down to custom size, make sure it's in inches and we want our page size to be 11 by 8.5 and select create a new design. Once your blank page pulls up, what I like to do is separate my two pages. Since we're going to be printing two coloring sheets per page, I want to go to elements. I want to scroll down to lines. I want to rotate this line. And I want to size it to fit my page. and I want to position it in the center here. I usually like to make my line a super light color, but you can leave it dark if you can't really see that light color. This way my two pages are separated and I know when I'm placing my images and text not to pass this line. The next step is to upload our coloring page images. Now, if you're going to be using this for your own personal use and not selling them, you can go to Google and search for free images, and I'm going to show you how to do that. However, if you're going to be selling your products, I don't recommend that you use any images that you found on Google without having the appropriate license to use them commercially. Let's say we're going to be creating a Spider-Man themed coloring book. So we're going to search for Spider-Man coloring pages. And all of these images pop up. What you want to do is click on the image. And you want to look at it and you want to make sure it's a high quality image. You don't want it to be blurry because it's not going to look right once it's printed. This is a pretty clear image and at the bottom here you can see the size of the image. So it's a good size. If you like this image, you want to click and you want to save it to your computer. And you will continue to do this, searching for images and saving them. You also want to make sure you include some fun activities for the kids to do. So while you're on Google, you can also search for free activity worksheets like a word search puzzle to add to your coloring book. Again, you want to make sure the image is a high quality image. You don't want it to be blurry. Once you're done saving all of your images, you want to head back over to Canva and upload all of the images you saved. All right, so now that we have all of our images uploaded, we can start adding them to our coloring book. To do this, simply select the image and resize it to fit your page. Just make sure you don't go over the middle line. If the image alone is a bit plain, you can add text. Select your text tab here, any of these options. You can change the font style by clicking here. And you want to try to find a style that fits your theme. Canva has a ton of free fonts, and you can also upload your own custom font with Canva Pro.
Now we can leave this text as is, or we can make it a bit more interesting and fun by giving it a hello effect like we did before. That will also give the kids something extra to color on the page. Next, you want to continue adding your coloring pages, images, and activities. One thing that I forgot to mention earlier, that before we started adding stuff to our pages, we wanted to make a duplicate copy of the blank page first. That way, when we go to our next page, we have a blank page. An important thing to remember while creating a discoloring book, since we're printing two pages per page and we're gonna be printing front and back, if we're wanting our pages to be in a particular order, we need to know how to set up the pages for printing. Our pages need to be set up like this. For example, if we're creating a 12 page coloring book, our pages need to be set up in this order. Our first page is actually going to be page 12 in one of our coloring book. The second page is going to be page 2 and 11 of the coloring book, and so on. Our even numbers are going to be on the left, and the odd numbers are going to be on the right. This is something you definitely want to keep in mind while designing your pages. It may be helpful if you go in and number your pages. You can always delete the numbers before you save and print. Now, if you're finding this a bit confusing and you don't necessarily need the pages in a certain order, you can just play around with the page arrangements after you have everything printed out. But if you need them to be in order, you must set your pages up correctly. See, if I left this design as is, the word search will actually be my first page and the coloring image will actually be my last page. Now, if I didn't want the word search as my first page, instead I wanted the coloring image, I know that I needed to switch these two images around. So how I would do that, I will click here and I will highlight everything. I'm going to group it together. And I'm just going to put the word search here and the coloring page. Now you don't have to leave the page numbers on here if you don't want to. After you're done, you can go back and delete the page numbers. As I mentioned earlier, when using free images from Google, you only want to use them for personal use. I personally like to use what is called digital stamps. Digital stamps are black and white clip arts that are perfect to use for coloring pages. All right, so I'm going to be creating a 12 page coloring book. So I have gone ahead and set up all of my pages here. I have also numbered the pages. I don't normally leave my page numbers on the page. I will delete it before saving, but I like to see the number. I'm also going to delete this middle divider here after I'm done designing. You can also find free activities to use in your coloring book like this maze over on Canva. Head on over to Elements. And in your search bar, search for what you're looking for, like maze. Once you find an image that you like, click on it to add it to your page and resize it. You can click on the color tab to change the image color. I also added my birthday word search that I created with Canva. I showed you in my previous video how to create a custom word search. Next, I'm going to show you how I created this tic-tac-toe game.
Here's how I created this handwriting activity page. Here, I just took my text and I went to effects and I added a hollow. This text is called Canva Student Font. You can search for it up here by going to the search tab and typing in Canva Student Font and it should pull up. It's two different ones. You want to look for the ones with the dotted lines. Here's how I made the handwriting lines. I went back up to elements and I selected my line. I went up to the line weight and I decreased it. And I just duplicated that line. My middle line, I went back up and I changed the style to the dashes. And I also changed the color. I highlighted all three of the lines and I grouped them together. For the name, I used the same font that I used earlier. It's called Canva Student Font, and you want to select the one with the dotted lines. On your activity pages, you also want to make sure you're typing in some directions so that the kids know what to do. After I'm done designing all of the inside pages of my coloring book, the last page I'm going to create is my cover page. While designing my cover page, I need to keep in mind that the front cover needs to be on the right and the back cover needs to be to my left. It looks crazy, but once we print and fold the paper in half, it's going to make sense. So after you have uploaded the images you want to use for your cover page, to add the image to the page, just select the image. If you wanted to use the same image for your front and back cover, just right click and send that image to the back and it will cover the entire page. If you wanted to use two separate images, just take your first image and resize it to fit that side of the page. You would do the same thing for your second page for your front image, making sure not to go over the line divider. Position your pages to the back. From here, we can continue adding images and text to our front and back page.
On my back cover page, I added my company's branding and I also added a barcode. So once I'm happy with everything, I want to go up to the Downloads tab and I want to save it as a PDF file. Now when it comes to printing, each printer is different and they all have different settings. So the way that I'm able to print my pages may be different from the way that you can print your pages. You're gonna have to go into your printer settings and play around with the settings to find the correct settings for your particular printer. Now, when I'm printing on my HP printer, the only thing that I really have to do is make sure I'm printing the actual size. I need to select print on both sides of the paper and I need to select the option to flip on the short edge. I also want to make sure that at first, I'm only printing my inside pages, so I don't want to print my cover page. The inside pages are going to be on regular copy paper, and the cover page is going to be on a thicker, glossy paper. So to do this, I need to select pages. And instead of all seven pages, I just need to print the first six pages because the cover page is the seventh page. After all of my pages are printed out, I'm going to fold everything in half. At first, I'm only going to fold my inside coloring pages. I'm just going to line the pages up, making sure they're all even and facing the right direction. And I'm going to fold them in half. I'm going to fold my cover page separate. I printed this out on glossy photo paper. Again, I'm just going to make sure the page is even before I start pressing down on it to fold it. Next, I'm going to take my inside coloring pages and place them inside my cover sheet. To staple my pages together, I'm going to be using this long reach stapler, but you can use a regular stapler and staple the sides of the booklet. But this stapler was made for putting booklets together and it makes it a whole lot easier to do. To package, I like to place them inside of these bags. I believe they're six by nine inches and I found them over on Amazon. And I also include some crayons. All right, guys, I hope you all found the video helpful. If you did, please give this video a big thumbs up and drop me a comment down below. You can find a list of all the materials that I use and any links if I have them in the description box down below. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't already and make sure you hit that notification bell so that you can be notified when I post more videos. Thanks so much for watching and see you next time. Bye.